The race at Nashville yesterday was a mess. It had five overtime finishes. He had crashes. He had multiple different instances of contenders running out of fuel. It just looked amateur. Any of those things on their own could have been, I think, excusable, normal, what it might be. But all of it put together just looked really, really bad for what should be some of the best drivers in all of racing. So should it change? The big talking point came with the five overtimes, the most in NASCAR Cup Series history. So what are the options? And no, the overtime line is not a valid option. So I don't want anyone poisoning the well in this conversation with that crap. But I think it is a conversation that can be had because there has been this conversation about saving money because of crashes or going and maybe finishing at a certain amount of time instead of just having it be unlimited. So let's look into the real options of what could be done and see what the best option is, both for a modern audience as well as for modern NASCAR teams. The first option is to keep it the same, unlimited overtime restarts. The pros to this are that, well, you get a better chance at a green flag finish, which say what you want about yesterday's race, we did see a race to the finish. This has become more and more important with modern NASCAR fans, more so than I'd say with most modern racing fans, as modern NASCAR fans want a finish at any means necessary in large amounts of time. And with this, you have to have unlimited restarts in many's eyes because if it ends under caution, well, that's just a problem. It also, for the NASCAR ownership group, everyone in the media, and you name it, it extends the peak viewership window. More people watch the finish. No duh. Everybody knows that. And it's more and more likely that they'll stick around to see how it ends, even if they're new. Because, yeah, if you're interested enough to stop on it and watch it for a bit, and then you have a guy maybe you pick out or you're already a fan and you're watching for your favorite driver to win, you're going to want to see the conclusion of that story. You see it in everything in racing. You see it in modern NASCAR. You see it in iRacing. You see it in general. Longer finishes get better results for viewership usually. And it usually has a much closer finish, and you're more likely to get a closer finish as well. I mean, yeah, you only have two laps to have a duel, and with that duel, it's pretty cut and dry and concise when it'll be. The cons to this are, well, pretty self-evident. While there's a much better chance at a green flag finish, it means that you might have multiple attempts, obviously, and you get that chance at chaos and, in some people's words, stupidity. And that's in large amount what happened at the Nashville race in 2024. And you could argue less deserving winners can happen as well. Joey Logano was nowhere near being one of the dominant guys during that Nashville race. It was easy to see that it was Denny Hamlin or Martin Truex Jr. or somebody like that, maybe Kyle Larson. So that can happen as well and really shake it up, but that could also be a pro to a lot of people. The next option is three overtime attempts. The pros to this are that you still get your extended chance at a green flag finish. How many times in the unlimited era have we seen it get over three? I think you'd be hard pressed to answer on more than just your hand of the amount of times you can count that happening. And that's something that needs to be pointed out. What we saw at Nashville yesterday was an outlier, but it was a pretty noticeable outlier at that. You still get the chances at the green flag finish with three overtimes, but it also allows both the competitors and the viewers to have a set ending in mind. You know that with how crazy it gets, it can still end in an anticlimactic way. So the competition has to keep that in mind if they're to gain spots or possibly go for the win. And like I said, you rarely will have a race need more than three. So it's not like this is the end all be all when it comes to how to finish a race. The cons to this are a little bit more in the gray area. You also can allow a race to end under yellow with this. And that still can happen more often than with unlimited restarts. You're going to have guys just still go crazy. And with that, they're going crazy on the third one. 
they crash, and NASCAR says, all right, we're pulling the plug on it. And it can cut off some good storylines or great endings that could happen if you just let it play out for another restart. And I think a lot of people have pointed that out when people say that we need to curtail it back to three overtime restarts. So it does have a bit more wiggle room than, say, the other two options we'll talk about. But at the same time, with the unlimited restarts compared to three overtime restarts, well, the three overtime restarts are still going to be more rigid for the competition and fans alike. Another option is just one overtime restart, which is how it was from about 2004 until 2009. The pros to this are that it still gives that extra chance of the green flag finish. You can't just end the race on a caution flag, so you will have that chance of the green finish, and fans can really anticipate that. It also protects, in some ways, from those who are just running amok. The tomfoolery and chaos that many have made out of three or unlimited overtimes really can't be done without penalty here. Because if you're not minding your P's and Q's in some degree and taking care of each other, well, then your race is done. And that is another problem people have with this, but it's something that will probably keep the competition at least a little more civil for at least a shorter time being, or at least maybe a longer time being at that. And it can raise the stakes up. Like I said, field knows it's over if they screw up, so you got to make sure you get it right. The cons to this, I think, are more along the further lines of what it was for three. You basically have a 50-50 shot at a green or yellow finish. And you know that if somebody screws up in one of those two laps, it's done. But it also is short. Many people don't like the fact that you're having a race decided in two laps. While that does happen a lot with overtimes, and we've seen it even this year, it's something that, if it doesn't pan out right, can be very anticlimactic and almost more upsetting than if it just ended under yellow. And it also cuts into that prime window for NASCAR and the networks to look at when it comes to viewership. If you end up having it only go maybe into turn one before they all start crashing, well, then instead of having another attempt and milking out the drama that could come up for the next five to ten minutes... You have it done in maybe five to ten seconds. And that's something the TV broadcasters are not going to like whatsoever if you're going to change to this. Just look at 2015 at Talladega with Joey Logano and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And then you got the old school option. Racing to the scheduled distance. The pros of this is that there's no unnecessary BS. You're not going to have a bunch of people crashing after the race's official mark because you're not going to be racing after it. It'll save the team's money as well, and that's something the teams have talked about when it comes just to everything is saving money, and this would. You would not have as many crashed race cars, and there are a lot of crashed race cars in all top three series every year thanks to overtime restarts. You also have a set distance, like all of racing. You know when it's going to end, and if y'all screw up, well, y'all ain't going to have a chance at a better finish, which also means there are some cons to this. Races, of course, will finish under the caution flag and have a lack of action, and that's something a lot of NASCAR fans, especially today, will not be a fan of. And again, TV probably is not going to be a fan of that as well. How many people really like watching a game come down to the wire and then end with a kneel down? It's one of the most anticlimactic plays in football, and this is the racing equivalent to that. So what's the verdict on it? Well, personally, I say three overtimes. Because, well, for one, if they can't get it done in three, they don't deserve another shot at it. But you also have to look at modern NASCAR, its fans, and the modern pros and cons. And I think it's the best of both worlds. You get the multiple attempts, but you also have that set distance so you're not going into complete insanity town. I personally be okay with the scheduled distance, but I understand most people are not fine with that because you'd end up having the problems we had in the early 2000s of guys just winning under caution. And we just can't have that, right? Well, with that, I want to know what you think. What is your preference? Let me know down in the comments below and why. While you're at, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great and fun NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.